Over the past years, you may have noticed a lot of multi-console hardware clones coming out. From single chip machines to emulation to FPGA, let's see where this all started and do a little comparison. <laughs> In the 90s, there were a plethora of Chinese knockoff NES consoles until companies like Ad Games, Yobo, also known as Hammy, Retrobit, and Hyperkin became popular. The first multi console solutions came in the form of space savers that allowed to play Atari on the ColecoVision. Introducing ColecoVision's first expansion module that lets you play all Atari 2600 compatible cartridges. Master System on the Genesis. Power Base Converter. It lets you play over 120 Sega Master and Genesis games or NES games on your Super Nintendo, or even N64 later on. But the first true multi-console clones arrived in the early 2000s with NES and Super NES Duo systems like Retrobits, Retro Duo, and the Chinese FC Twin, which is as old as 2006. The first triple console system was probably Yobo's FC3 Plus, which came out in 2008, and is still sold today under the Hammy brand. It was utter garbage, made of cheap plastics, very prone to break, bad sound quality and it lacked a good compatibility overall. But it worked and hell was I excited for what was about to come. Retrobit's first Super Retro Trio arrived in 2014. It was a huge leap forward in compatibility, but in an era where HDTVs are the standard, there was still no way to connect the system to HDMI unless you used the converter. Until later that year, when Hyperkin's Retron 5 was launched to much acclaim. But to be honest, I never really got why people loved it so much. This was not a clone like anything we saw before, but rather a mini computer with emulators that first extracts the ROMs from your cartridges and then plays them on an emulator. Of course the video quality will be great because this is software emulation, which has been around for ages. Not much later, Japan-based company CyberGadget released their own emulation-based console, the RetroFreak, which in addition offered PC Engine support. This is nice, but the concept is the same. These systems were a success because they are plug and play, but technically there's nothing impressive about it at all. Emulation for your PC, console or Raspberry Pi has been around forever and if you wanted to use the original cartridges as a source, you could hook them up with a retro. It provides better compatibility and to me there's no technological difference. Also, light gun games won't work on emulation based systems, nor will flash based multi cartridges like the EverDrive or other weird accessories. And then there are those cartridges that contain their own hardware inside, like Super Nintendo's AVEX chip. They will work, but only because they're already implemented in the system's emulator, the actual chip does nothing. And be fair, where's the nostalgic fun in popping in a game to play it when you have to wait for the ROM to be loaded? It feels like you're downloading a game on a virtual console platform. Not at all like you're playing from your own actual cartridge, because you aren't. I'll also mention that the Retron 5 is packaged with emulators and software like SNES 9X and LibRetro that use non-commercial licenses. The same goes for CyberGadget's RetroFreak, who have actually made the step to suspend their sales until this matter is resolved, and RetroBit's own Super RetroCade, which is a plug and play system without cartridge slot. Packing in non-commercially released emulators and selling them without credit and without allowing people to build upon its altered code is rather disrespectful to what the open source community stands for. If you care about the future of emulators and free software in general, you should think twice about buying the mentioned systems until this is rectified and I do feel bad for grabbing a Retron 5 myself a few years back. I must also mention that some of these companies did try to get a proper license, but there's a fake subcontractor involved, so these companies are not the only one to blame. As far as the Retron 5 goes, I could continue by talking about the tiny delay you get from emulation, which make very time-specific games like some shooters unplayable, how unreliable the Retron 5 has been in general, breaking easily too many, how off the color palette can be, and how horrible the brick-shaped controller it comes with is. But I'll leave it as is. In the past years, other multi console clones have been released as well. 2017 brought us the classic 2 HD NES SNES system, which has pretty great visuals from what I've seen. 
and also offers a button to change the aspect ratio, a great feature to have. Can't say much else about it because I don't own one. There's also the Gamers Tag 2-in-1 system coming out. Their previous HD SNES and NES installments were very cheap in price and had a nice color palette, but the HD signal does not come straight from the video chips. Instead, these systems contain a composite to HD video converter inside, leaving an unsharp result. Also, the sound was off. Then there is the Hami Retro 2-in-1 HD from China, which has been out for a while, but is most likely from the same factory as the Gamers Tag 2-in-1, but in a different shell and button layout. You can see this when you look at the layout of the connectors for both systems, just like the Fami HD is similar to the HD NES. When you look inside of the Gamers Tag NES system, the Hami 12 text on the PCB pretty much confirms that these two consoles are actually the same thing. Hami is a generic clone console factory based in Shenzhen, China, and their systems have been sold under many names over the years. These systems can easily be found at AliExpress for a few bucks and vary greatly in quality. Speaking of quality, aren't there any better options out there than any of these clones? Well, not really as a multi-console, but if you accept separate machines and you want the closest to the original as possible, you have FPGA systems like the AVS from Retro USB and the Analog NT to play NES, or even the recently launched Analog Super NT for Super Nintendo. And these will always be better, because those systems emulate the behavior of the original console's hardware chip by chip. This requires some fast processing and an incredible amount of engineering you just can't expect from the other systems I mentioned. Right now, these systems are about $200 or higher and that's a lot of money for just a hobby, but I'm certain that in the near future FPGA systems will make the single chip clones and emulation based consoles obsolete, especially when the prices come down and when the internal chips can be rewritten on the fly to allow multiple consoles. But until this happens, the recently launched Super Retro Trio Plus with HDMI might just be the perfect choice for a clone system. Watch my next video for an in-depth review about the pros and cons of the Retro Trio Plus by Retrobit. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. Cheers!